Hi everyone, my name is Sarah. I go by G Sarah on Instagram and today I need to do my inventory. I kind of started to do my inventory a month ago when I was trying to record this very video. A spider like the size of my hand crawled out from down there. So if you see me like constantly looking in that corner, that's why. But all of my inventory is really messed up. My products, my materials, everything is just out of whack really bad right now. And there's a reason for it, but I'll tell y'all that reason in a different video. I just want to show you guys how I go about counting uh, my inventory, especially when you start buying in wholesale and you think like, okay, that's, that's too much to do. It's really not. You just have to be smart about it. And I'll show you guys how I do it. It doesn't take very long and I have a lot of stuff. So I'm going to show you guys what I do and hopefully it'll help y'all when maybe doing your inventory seems a little bit um, overwhelming. Whenever you print out your fragrance oil, fragrance oils, whenever you print out your inventory from Inventora, it's gonna have it, all of it in alphabetical order, which there might be a way to change that. I, I haven't um, put the time into figuring that out. I just like to go through and I like to do all of the fragrance oils and it says right next to it if it's a fragrance oil. This isn't going to be exact because this is a different kind of bottle, but I'm, gonna, I'm still gonna just minus probably 1.5 from all of these bottles that are 16 ounce bottles. And that will give us what we have left in this bottle. 11.55 minus 1.5 would be 10.05. And then next to it, it has reason for difference. I already know why I'm like one and a half ounces under what I should have. It's because I over pour everything all the time. I can't under pour because if I, if I haven't reached the amount that I'm supposed to have put in all the candles, I'm going to keep going. I'm not going to stop before I get there. And then at that point I pour more than I'm supposed to. And I don't really care about that. Reason for difference. I'm just going to put OP overpowered um over pouring because i just i thought that's what i do with everything this next fragrance oil says that i have 37 ounces by the way if y'all are wondering how i have my stuff organized i have all of my unopened bottles like unopened 16 ounce bottles in here i'm just now starting to buy stuff in, in bigger quantities when i can and this is all the stuff that i have that i use in my candles and i have it all in just like a, a tray a tray a basket so this is one that I use and I've got 13 ounces minus 1.5. So I have 12.5 ounces. Now it says here that I should have 37.91. I don't think that I over poured by 35 ounces. So that probably means that I've got some extras. I have a 16 ounce bottle here and a 16 ounce bottle here. So that means that I have 32, which means I'm still off. I do have 43.5, let's circle it so I know with all the numbers I just wrote down that that's the amount. Now what's expected is 37.91. I know y'all might be thinking, oh, that means that you under poured like crazy. No, that just means either, yes, I under poured by six ounces over the last year, which I already know that that's not true, or that my product inventory is off. So over here, I'm going to put reason for differences inventory. Now, obviously in the reason for difference area, you could just write whatever you want. It, they do require that you write something in inventory. It's good that you do your inventory often. And I think it's funny that I say that because I haven't done my inventory in about a year. It's good to do your inventory frequently because then you can see if there's stuff wrong. Like normally I would be doing my inventory. If I didn't already know that my products were messed up, it would be good to see here like oh i'm off by like six ounces why that's not good maybe your actual formula making the candles is wrong maybe the formula that you entered into the computer that automatically draws from your materials is wrong it just it helps you to figure out where you might have some errors going on if it's really close and you're only off by a little bit it probably just means that you are over pouring like me or under pouring a little bit sometimes i'll notice whenever i add like new stuff in that I didn't write something right like normally all of them say ounces because that's how I measure them one of them it says pieces so that means I need to go in and I need to change the way that I have it in the system and so it's nice to just like be able to write little notes so I'm done with the fragrance oils and most of them were accurate there was a few that were off but I'm pretty sure that it's because of my products being way off 
In case y'all are wondering, I measured everything on this scale and I'm going to be measuring everything on this scale. So I'll have it tagged down below. I do have a link to my Amazon shop, which has everything that I use like in all my videos, it, most everything, not everything, but most everything. <sighs> Matte black tins. It says that I have 80, so let's just go. I can't really see. I don't really feel like counting these one by one. There are two total rows in the back that are totally filled up. And the filled up row is one, two, three, four, five, six. Six times seven is 42. Wow, I need to go back to kindergarten. I think it's 42. And we have 42 times two because there's two rows. So automatically we have 84 tins. It says we have 80. So 84 plus 31 is 115. 115, so we're way off. And that's because the product inventory is off. So let's write that. So now let's find our frosted jars. It says I have 106. So I just checked earlier and I still have two boxes in the closet and each one of those is filled with 48. So 48 plus 48 equals 96. We've got, we have 104. It says we should have 106. So one, two, three, four times one, two, three. So 12, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. Glassine bags. So I buy my glassine bags in boxes of a thousand. So I'm not gonna count those. Not until they start getting, you know, closer to being gone and then I'll count it. Now we're gonna do the heavy stuff because I feel like people um, are probably wondering how the heck do you do you measure like giant bags of wax or um, in my case, I have giant bags of salt also. All right, so I have a big box of some Coco 83 right there and I literally just opened it the other day just to put the teeny tiny amount that was left in my previous box in there. Like a really small amount of wax that I just kind of scraped out because it's really expensive wax. I wasn't going to waste any of it. Scraped it out of the bag and then kind of just squished it into the new box and then closed it back up. My other boxes of wax are a box of 444. It's a 45 pound box. And then we also have whatever I have left in my box that I'm constantly pouring out of. So I'm going to show you guys how I measure um, the wax that I have left that I've already opened because obviously it's super easy to just read a box. And, and you know how much it weighs, but it's harder to know how much you have left of a box that you have opened. So you're gonna take a scale. This scale, uh, I think it's 33 pounds. This is a 33 pound scale. So just be careful. If you are trying to do like almost an entire box, don't do that. Wait until you're like halfway done at least. That way you know you're not gonna break you know, your scale. So what I like to do is take one of my lids off of my bins because it's kind of see-through so that way I can set it on top of my scale and then I can still read the weight and this will carry all of the wax that I set on top. So let me just show you. Just so that y'all um, do this correctly, you're going to want to set it on and then turn the scale on because it's really hard to tear it. That way it'll automatically start at zero. Like right now, it says zero. And now, I'll do the wax. Six point seven seven pounds of wax. Which means I'm pretty off. So 45 plus 6.77 is 51.77. And I was expected to have 60 pounds, so that's scary. I need to get wax, <laughs> like now. All right, there's the wax, and you can do that method with um, all of your waxes. These are all my salts. This is the other box of the 416 wax, but it's almost full, so I'm not going to take that off and put it on here because it will break the scale. All right, so let's do Himalayan pink salt. Oh, it smells so good in here. All right. 
I have 3.75 pounds. Oh, I think I already did these last time. <laughs> okay, so all my salts are accurate, but um, this is just how you would do it. If you make bath salts or if you just have stuff that's it's pretty heavy and it's in bags and you're like, I don't know how I'm gonna put that on a scale. This is how you do it. So. I know what I wanted to show y'all was counting um, your labels. If you care to count your labels, you could categorize this as something that's too difficult to count and you just don't, you just don't until you're, you know, a lot lower. But I figured out the math to doing it. So I'm going to show y'all how to do that real fast. This is where the spider crawled at last time. It's right there. All right, I can do this. I can do it. I can do it. Um, I'm gonna need a calculator. So I'm just gonna show y'all one of these so that this video isn't so terribly, like, painfully long. I should have 442 Visma labels. I've got folders where I put all these up top so I can just easily grab some, and then the bulk of them is down below. And then there's a folder of stuff that I've already printed out that I haven't used yet. Two, four, six, eight, nine, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 19, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28. I'm gonna write that down. Each one of these is two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. So each page has 12. So 12 times two is 24. And then grab these. So we already know that each sheet has 12. Now let's just count how many sheets we have left. One. Two, three, four. Thirty-three. So we have thirty-three sheets. Thirty-three times twelve is three hundred ninety-six. So three hundred ninety-six plus twenty-four plus twenty-eight is four hundred and forty-eight which was really close. So that's how you would count your your bulk um, labels. I think that that's everything, but I'm gonna go over real quick thank you cards. I have a thousand, I have over a thousand thank you cards, so that's, no, that's not gonna happen. Thank you stickers are some of my labels, but I'm not gonna walk you through that whole thing again. So tissue paper, there's no way for me to know. Vibar, <clears throat> I would just weigh it, which I'll do that. I'm not gonna mark it off. Wix stickers. I guess if you wanted to count your Wix stickers, you could. Mine are in a big roll, so that wouldn't be too hard um, to just to just count them. All right, <clears throat> I think I'm done. <laughs> I mean, I still have to go in and, and count um, a few more things. But yeah, so that's pretty much it. I hope that this video was helpful. I know it was probably way too long and I'm really sorry for that. My first inventory video, I remember saying something along the lines of that you should be doing your inventory every week maybe or like every month. <laughs> I haven't done it in a very long time. The last time that I did do it was a few months ago, but I didn't even do all of it. So because giant spider just do it as often as you have time for. It's not something that's like the end of the world if you don't do your inventory all the time, obviously, because I'm fine. <laughs> it's just good to get caught up to know exactly where you are because you don't, especially with like product inventory, I'm about to do that. I'm not gonna do it on camera though because it's very self-explanatory. You just count how many products you have. Um, but with the bigger stuff, especially when you're selling, you know, or when you're, when you're buying wholesale, it's hard to, it, it might be intimidating to look around and be like, oh my God, how am I supposed to count all of this? I hope that this video helped with showing y'all like there are certain things that yes, you should, you should count or weigh, but there are some other things that there's no way for you to know. It's something that you just kind of have to keep your eye on. And then there's other things that you have so much of it might seem unbearable to even think about how you would go about counting it. So I, I hope that this video was helpful for people that might be scared of doing inventory or don't know how to do inventory because I, I didn't when I first started doing all this. I didn't know how to do any of this a year ago. So this is just what I've learned in the past year of being a business owner. And um, yeah, 
thank you guys for watching and I, I'm working on getting more content out there. It's just, things are crazy right now and I, I still have to tell y'all what's been going on with um, the business because uh, things have been happening and it's awesome and crazy and I'll tell you guys, um, I'll probably tell you on the next video. I just, I have to, I have to have time. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for watching this video and as always be excellent to each other and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Thank you.